Right. Morning everybody and welcome to our channel. If you've not met my husband, where, where is he? Is, he? <laughs> is he here? This I'm just a Mark. bit on the side. People that have been here with us for the last couple of years again, know you exactly seriously, how irritating are you introducing Mark? But some people don't know Mark yet because when they come over new from Instagram, they haven't necessarily met him. Nah. So I feel I do have to introduce him, otherwise they might be thinking, who the hell is that? I just want to give a particular shout out to a uh, username, which is draws one att one's attention despite oneself, Fiona Snotrag Toadstool Reed. <laughs> Good morning Hi, to Fiona. you. <laughs> I'm guessing you're Fiona Reed, but you've just inserted snot. You don't want to ever insert Thank a snot rag toadstool. Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> so listen, if you're new to the channel, just hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, so that because though we are here every morning, Monday to Saturday. Oh, what's that? That's good. Good play. Um, we we do it at different times, so the notification bell means that YouTube will be able to notify you and tell you that we're live. Um, and for those of you who are family guests, there will be a members live later this week during uh, or after a one. wine o'clock. We're going to do a couple of wine o'clocks this week because we can't do coffee moments. So, um, like, first question, oh, first of all, just before we started this live, Mark and I were having an argument or discussion about what? who was the biggest wanker. Who was the biggest wanker? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I am. What are you talking about? I'm a huge wanker. We were talking about how... Because he started off by saying he's a wanker. He was having to edit something. Know, he no. was going, oh, my God, I'm I such caught, a wanker. I caught a and glimpse I and I was like, oh, fuck I said, God. darling, you're not a wanker. He says, oh, no, you, oh, yeah. Whenever you say to me, why are you being Richard Madeley, I always think, oh, I must be being a bit of a wanker. And anyway, so we were talking about how much of a wanker he was or wasn't. <laughs> and then he went, and I went, I mean, my God, you know, we're all wankers. I can't watch. Did you get the same notification? Get <laughs> yeah. Up and do 15 <laughs> Come on, let's go. On. On. Yeah, talk about um, me being a wanker whilst walking. Um, yeah, so... So anyway, so, so do I, Zoe. It's it was a great so word, isn't funny. It? And I said, well, you know what I mean? We do six days a week of this live show and neither of us could ever watch it after. So I, if I sometimes accidentally see it come up, I'm like, oh, my God, I couldn't watch it. No, no, we don't. I would, I would have a visceral response to yeah. me. Yeah. Um, here's, here's a shout out to those who uh, like to edit little compilations and what have you. You know what I would love? I would love one for posterity of... Uh, Nanny Dye and Green Fing a Green Fingered Hell compilation, I think would be great fun. There are some very, very funny moments. I must admit, I, Mum, you make me roar with laughter. You make me roar with Oh, look, there's Alison Barber joined as a, as a, as a family guest. Uh, we'll, jo we'll do happy birthdays and welcomes at the end. So that, yeah, so we do uh, a welcome for everyone that joins the members yeah. there. And we do happy birthdays, happy anniversary, anything. So welcome, Alison. But we'll, do, do, we'll destroy your name through the medium of dance, well, not dance, but song. Whose yeah. child has gone back to school today? Yeah, who's back at school today? Because Kiki doesn't go back to tomorrow. Oh, Deborah Holdsworth says, I love the song I'm a Wanker by Iva Biggin. Oh, maybe we could do this before by the Iver show. By Iva Biggin. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> love that. I love that. Morning, The Peach 72. See, I'm so annoying in the background already. I can see myself coming back at myself. Uh, look at your boobs. <laughs> Everyone's Fitbits have, have, have taken off. Uh, certain subs have turned me into a wanker, Fiona Snotrag, Toadstool Reed says. Uh, last Thursday for my son, says Ellie Denning. Oh, yeah, yeah. wow. Well, As go back tomorrow. That's weird, isn't it? Grandkids have gone back today, Nanny Bluebell. Uh, I know why ours is, why, why Kiki's going back. The school is actually back today, but it's like the youngsters going year 10. Oh, that's right. That's why. She yeah. would have been back today. Hi, Jen Legs. Hope you're well. Hope my you're two well. boys have gone back to school today. Yeah, yeah. Mm. We're going to be doing a Confessions of a Modern Parent about... Has anyone else? We'll just flag this up now. I find it really odd when I see posts by people drinking... Oh, lots of people drinking Prosecco saying, yeah, yeah kids it's are going. Yeah, it's different, isn't it? Some people look really forward to yeah. their kids going back and others don't. Well, we're going to talk about that. We're going yeah. to talk about that. We get on with them, so we miss them. Um, two of grandkids have gone back to Hill and Groves uh, to school today, and the other two went last Thursday. Wow. Uh, Poor buggers. Miriam W., who else is feeling a bit yuck this morning? Uh, mm. I took a remedy last night. I feel better. You are yeah, definitely yeah, better. Yeah, Don't yeah, go too good. crazy on no, the coffee no, I'm not today. Uh, Elaine Ginolfi, Ginolfi, my stepdaughter, step-granddaughter, has started a new school after moving house. Look, school bus two for the first time. Oh, the school bus. I never did the school bus. I did the tube. It's Monday. Can't trust that day, says Raspberry Mahita you to go. Um, yeah, love them home, May Boo. But we're the same. We're the same. Um, anyone about to go back to university because that's one of the big stories today in the papers is about universities 
and mental health, the mental health issues of students that find themselves at university. And it was really weird as I was reading this. This is about this opt-in scheme as to whether, I mean, there's a story in the Times saying that many universities are still leaving families in the dark about the suicide risk. Um, uh, we had the awful experience of, uh, in one of our daughter's graduation, um, a student in, in her year sadly committed suicide. Uh, and it was the most poignant of moments when at the award ceremony. You were um, there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the student was awarded their degree posthumously <coughs> and uh, the father went up to accept the, the uh, certificate on, on their behalf. It was just tragically sad. And suicides in universities are on the increase and just incidents are on the increase. And trying to pick up your child. It's just, it's just awful. Oh. It's just awful. But for me, it is no surprise, it is no surprise that you send students out into an increasingly jangly world, which is increasingly expensive, mm. where they're having to uh, be socially and, and socially, you know, sophisticated. I mean, it's very difficult. I mean, I remember when I landed at university, I was, I, I, the reason I went for a shared room was I wanted to be forced into meeting people. Do you know what I mean? I thought, well, at least I'll have to get to know my roommate. The fact that we didn't stay friends was by the by. But for someone with social anxiety, and that's why drink is used a lot, it's why I think Freshers' Weeks are so sort of chaotic, because it's an overcompensatory desire to connect with everyone else. It's not just that, but, you know, principally that. Um, and so when they find themselves on their own across the year, it can be very lonely. So imagine how you feel if you feel any sense of estrangement from your family. Mm -hmm. And that's what this new... So there's a campaign to have this opt-in situation with universities where students have, all students have someone who's contactable uh, in the case of a mental health crisis or something going wrong or their absence, you know, it becomes suspicious or concerning or worrying or anything like that. But it's amazing apparently how many universities haven't signed up to this in, in oh, the times. Amy before. May, I don't drink so I'm scared of being left out of Freshers Week. Wow, yeah, well there you go. There Maddie's you go. Um, boyfriend doesn't drink. Yeah. I mean, what would you say to that, Mark? That's a really good. It, that's I, a really good point. You should do I a chat on that for freshers. No, uh, you know, if I if I was to take myself back and that's think really about smart, trying to get Amy. to grips with the university or, or higher education, the social side of it, without alcohol, I don't. I, I literally can't think of. You know, you're all, very, you're also yeah. too young in many regards to know whether you're you know you have a problem with alcohol. And whether you know what, why you're not drinking, why you need to drink, how you can drink, can you drink? You know, I mean, that's, that's really difficult if you don't want my, to. Uh, um, my nephew, I remember him saying, "Fresh." Well, no, as, quite a few people have heard this from that on freshers, and I'm not saying drink at all. If you don't drink, you don't drink. But how many of them like weren't necessarily big drinkers or drinkers, mm. and they they drank a lot in that freshers week, and it just confirmed to them that they didn't want to be drinkers, mm. and then it all calms down. I mean, I don't. It's not the only way to make connections, is it? Because say you're all going to a pub or a club or whatever, how much connection is being made <laughs> really beyond the first it's five drinks? Really, yeah. What is it? I don't know because I've not been to university. I mean, it sounds like hell on earth to me, freshers week. Well, from a drinking perspective, it totally is. I mean, yeah. I didn't know anyone who didn't drink. I mean, and that was anyone within the extended groups either. Everyone drank. Everyone so drank. extraordinary not to drink. Everyone drank. It is a superpower not to drink. I mean, I am in awe of people that don't drink. Yeah. Um, but what? Yeah, that's a Aaron, really good. Erin, I wish I had the bravery not to drink on a night out, but I'm mm. so socially anxious on a night out that I would just isolate. But you know, and you were about to say, I mean, how mm. how much are people really connecting? I don't think I don't think it's a kind of. I don't even no. think it's a hedonistic desire to be, you know, to do damage. I just think there's no, at that age, you're not having awareness. Exactly. I remember when I was in rehab, there was one girl who was, who was 19 in there. And she'd gone through such an accelerated catastrophe of drinking from the age of 12 to 19. That's actually surprisingly rare to have it mm. so extreme in those early years that at 19, you're very... But there is more of a movement about sobriety now, to the point yeah, there where is. there's even yeah, yeah. now articles in in in, mm. in in the broadsheets about should we be worrying that young people aren't drinking, mm. if you can believe it. But, but I wonder it... if there are in, at universities now. Uh, I follow quite a few accounts on Instagram of young people that are running sober accounts. I wonder if there are sober. Mm unions or something well there's always there's always in freshers i remember signing up to the rowing club 
um, the, <laughs> the first week I went there. And I immediately never went to uh, any rowing club, society, rowing, the rowing society, because I was so posh. I literally felt so abs excluded and outside. I had to sort of find my, I had to find my secondary school kind of types to, to feel like I could do it. But, but further than the, even the drinking or not drinking, it's, it's being isolated in digs. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? In 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 uh, an accommodation, in a flat, in a sort of and it's always built been flat, hard. and you can be so but, alone. But I think you know, as you were saying, young people are facing so many things that other young. I think they are having the hardest of ever. I don't yeah, care yeah, yeah, how yeah, hard I'm. You know, the huge cost for their education, and then yeah. the planet, the way that it is, and war, and Russia, and parents being concerned about money they have got so much on their plate mm. that this just seems this idea seems yeah. it should be mandatory really yeah. that there should be somebody because i i think at the moment they uh, universities won't because they're classed as an adult yeah, yeah, yeah. won't won't ring anyone if they think that their student is in trouble well this is the campaign is to yeah, make so sure the campaign that, they is do make, that it's just somebody it anybody. doesn't have to be a parent because not everybody gets on with it Precisely, precisely. Or wants them to know what's going on. So I think that's really important that they do, and it's good that the Times are throwing the spotlight. Obviously, the big news today is uh, noon today. We're going to know who our new Prime Minister is. Uh, should we do a poll? Who do you think is going to win? <laughs> like, we, like we wonder. Who is next I, PM? I don't like Rishi Sunak, but I think Rishi Sunak isn't afraid to say the truth. And the truth is... You know, these increases that he was going to make in tax were only for the very wealthy. Mm. I mean, and that's why he's not going anywhere. Because the well, Tories won't she's, have that. She's also, Truss is also talking, I mean, Truss is kind of the PM elect in a sense. Yeah. She's talking about, and I, I wanted to share this because I think for a lot of people, they want to hear something that kind of is a bit comforting potentially in the incoming nightmare. And it's unusual, isn't it, that, that Truss, Truss is talking about freezing energy bills. And that means they just will be held static. And the only way she can do this is by borrowing uh, and then by encouraging the energy firms to take out loans uh, or, or to loan the money to the, to the energy firms that can then be paid back when the energy prices come down. It's going to be on an equivalent level to the furlough scheme. So there are discussions there and I think there will be an announcement. Now, this is... Uh, this isn't party politics. This isn't about whether you like Truss or Sunak. I just think it's important for people to hear at this stage, as people get in, are getting quite panicked, understandably, that there is help coming down the line. And what I think about, a freezing of energy bill... Well, that's the big question, because, of course, so many small businesses like pubs and... It's, I, and I have listened to so many people on the mm. radio that are just breaking my heart, that mm. have just absolutely are on their bellies, like, mm. crawling like this, having survived the pandemic, and they say, there is no doubt about it. We will shut down immediately if we're not given this cap. Well, I mean, their prices. I mean, I was reading that many pubs would go from something like fifteen thousand energy yeah. bill up to sixty thousand. Yeah, or something. So anyway, so it's more than likely going to be trust. Look, eighty-four percent of you think that, and um, you know, but, but they are. I, th I think it's just important. It's incumbent on anyone going. I mean, in a weird way, they're kind of nibbling at the edges of what the Labour Party were suggesting, which is a freeze on. And so, yeah, they might have nicked Labour's policy, but you know, you need they need a, they need a solution. And I think it will be a solution of sorts uh, for the hardest. So, has this been leaked, or is this? They're in we This is again. These leaks suggest it's the Times. Usually, when the Times pre-reports it, it's going to happen. So, I think that's going to happen. Trust will freeze energy bills but it is a bit you're, you're right a big question mark is what will happen for certainly in the hospitality sector but maybe they'll do sort of targeted help for certain industries um so yeah but i mean my god she's got a load of fucking stuff in her in tray she's she? gonna sit at that desk and go what yeah the fuck? yeah I mean, do I, what is it they say? Be careful what you wish for. Jesus yeah. Christ. No, Karen Rogers, we were talking about it in the No Name Sunday show yesterday. There is a talk of a vote of no confidence and trust straight away. And there's also a campaign to get Boris Johnson back in. I, and there's also oh, talk God. that the, the Tories have kind of already in their head said, we don't want to win the next election. Let's regroup. The biggest danger in that, is, as I keep saying, is if uh, Keir Starmer, for, for the Tories, the biggest danger is if Keir Starmer goes for the proportional representation. Because then, in a sense, both Labour... Labour's got nothing to lose because they can't get into power for long enough. 
uh, the Tories will lose that stranglehold on 12 and The reason years. that they do, uh, the rumour is that they want to throw the next election is because it's such a mess. Things are such a mess. So that then the next yeah, party yeah. will come in and, and be, be unable to do anything. And then they'll be able to sweep in again and get another bloody 10, yeah, 12 exactly. years. You were talking about this new vaccine. You're, you're, well, uh, new vaccines coming in for the autumn. I mean, God, the vaccine word. We haven't talked about that for a while, have we? Mm. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about that, guys? Will you be taking another one? Yeah. Hi, Louise Jones. I mean, everyone, I, hi, Louise Jones. We'll be singing you a welcome song at the end. Um, I know, I saw that, Faith. Boris can over, earn over £150,000 per speech. I know. He's going to become incredibly wealthy. Yeah, he's going to sort of sort that out and then come back. He's going to bounce back. Boris the Trump bounce. the second. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, so, yeah, UK approved second COVID vaccine targeting Omicron variant. I thought, I thought um, AstraZeneca had come out saying there wasn't much need for another, for another jab. Well, there was an article, yeah, from the AstraZeneca people, weren't there? I mean, how do you feel? Are you going to take another vaccine? Or will yeah, you take another one? You can't question. put vaccine, won't we be? No, this, I think they've calmed down. But will you have the new autumn vaccine? Uh, I am undecided. I am undecided. V withers deaths increased since vaccine. Um, yeah, well, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of people who feel there are connections between the vaccine and all sorts of conditions. Uh, Pink Lady, for the older people, fair enough, like flu jab, but not, but otherwise, uh, I'm thinking of saying no. So at the moment, it's it's going, there's about, I think it's about three and a half million who will be called. Yeah. And there's going to be, I don't know, 3,000 sites, vaccine sites for the new rollout. Is this for people and in home care homes? This is people over 75, isn't it? Care yeah. home staff. And then the next batch will be over 50. Right. So we'll be the next ones to be. Right. Um, <coughs> I won't get a choice because of my Crohn's disease. Well, yeah, yes, yeah. of course, for a lot of people, mm. it will be, you would be desperately wanting it, won't mm. you? My daughter mm. has leukemia, so dare not, dare not not take it, yeah. Not sure yet. Everyone I know has been fine lately. I will take it. Not having mm. any more felt so. Well, look, look on the poll it. though. It's split down the middle. Forty-eight yeah, percent. Yes, it's slightly more saying no. Um, mm. I mean, I'd rather. I would rather not, if I'm honest, because I just think interfering with uh, with ourselves more than necessary. But you know, that, you know, especially. I mean, there's a possibility of traveling to America, so you know, one would have to. One would have yeah. to, if you go to, to the States, I think they, it's, it's mandatory, isn't it, to be fully vaccinated. You can't do the tests and, and all that kind of stuff before you So go. there's a lot of people that are feeling like this. I've had three COVID vaccines and I had the um, COVID, before COVID. It was declared a pandemic. my lymph swelled up, not having the next vaccine, I don't feel I need right. to. I think a lot of people feel that way, don't they? Yes. And they say that. And, you know, feel yeah. that with the vaccines they've had, and that. I mean, I don't know. Erin, maybe over a certain long. age, it's good, but I don't think young people should be having vaccines twice a year every year. Okay, yeah, 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 I kind of agree. I kind of agree. I think you yeah. know, for the vulnerable, maybe a, a different argument. Yeah. Um, this story, which I saw over the weekend, and you brought back up this today, was a, is a, is an arresting one, isn't it? This fisherman, this fisherman who was rescued after spending eleven days adrift in a freezer. Clever though. In Brazil. So in he Brazil. just saw it and saw that it was the only thing that was floating, got into it. The poor man, no food, no water. Mm. Sharks circling. At one point, the water was starting to come in, he was having to scoop it. And he must have gone into so many different mm. um, head spaces. Head spaces. Um, he believed that he said he could bump what it was his God that freezer was God and the God and God was holding him up Hardly surprising. He, he, he just kept thinking of his children and his parents and his wife and he just kept praying and praying praying and he and he the boat came along after 11 days and pulled him out God. so he's got oh, damage is. to his eyes look at him yeah. you have to look at the pictures guys yeah, go to um, the day so his eyes are damaged from the sun and everything Good luck getting out. It's a big freezer. Fortunately, I mean, it's not a small freezer, obviously. But there he is getting out. 11 days. 
Good God. I'll tell you what it reminded it so me of. It reminds incredible. me of, do you remember the story of Tony Bullimore? No food, no tomorrow, no remember, food or water. Do you remember the story of Tony Bullimore, who, I think he lost his thumb and he was under, his boat tipped over and he was, he, he survived for, I think it was, we interviewed him years ago, he, he survived for about a week or 10 days yeah. underneath. I think he had a Mars bar. That was it. For... I just thought the human body couldn't survive that long without water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he is made of strong stuff. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Was the door shut? No. No. No, so he's out the top like this, just sitting like properly in a boat. So imagine, but that's why his eyes are damaged because he had no relief from the sun or mm, anything. Mm. It's quite, quite a oh, remarkable Imagine story. at night time as well. Oh my God, dog, oh. dog, dog. Knowing there are fish and keeping well, it- shocks, sir, But keeping it, keeping it floating. I know. So he'll have been bailing out. Because at one out, point he was bailing about. out just with his hands. Yeah, and he had yeah, nothing yeah. in that freezer except the clothes he was in. Yeah. And the but and he would have got sunstroke. Yeah, and, terrible. I mean Brazil. I mean God, how hot is it in Brazil now? Oh. Um. And imagine if there was a massive rainfall and the thing was filling up. Maybe that's what he mean, means when he was bailing out. Yeah, yeah. I think he probably was because it would have been <laughs> splashing in, wouldn't it? Um, one of the stories in our title is Ever Right to Dump Friends. Um, this was a story, that, this, well, you saw something today, didn't you, that kind of snagged your interest. Was it John, John, Legend John Legend? John Legend was saying how he and, <clears throat> I love John Legend, how he and his, for his friendship with Kanye has broken down. <clears throat> he said Kanye was very, very angry with him that he didn't support his run for president. And he said, I'm not saying that, you know, a person's politics are the be all and, ev and, and of everything. But people's values do matter and they can change and therefore your friendship can change. And yeah. I'm a real believer in this. To be true. Yep, it's fine to dump friends. We outgrow we can out people. Exactly. It's just another relationship. Mm. And because there isn't sex involved, why are we supposed to think of it in a completely different way? Mm. Relationships can become toxic. People can really change through their own lifetime. Mm. Um, people can get to a point where you're bored of them. I mean, it's Just like they can in a sexual relationship. So. It's interesting, isn't it? You'd go into couples counselling for, I mean, I can think of incidents uh, in my life and I can think of incidents in everyone else I know where you sometimes wonder is, I wonder if there's a, I wonder if this, I wonder if this is possible. Can you have like couples counselling for friends? Yeah. Can you and sort of- And of course of, in America they do it. Oh, well. right, okay. so. Is it something, you know, if, if there's a friendship that's been going for years and you're, you, you, you know, you both know that you're at loggerheads and you don't want it to end, but you are drifting apart, you are drifting apart, it, it, it's, you know, it's surely, sorry, just one second, um, surely, um, what am I asking? What are you asking? Yeah, what am I asking? I forgot what Oh, you lost your way. Sorry, you got something there. Um, I, I, I think we sometimes lay too much store in how long a friendship has been rather than how good a friendship has been. People can become very controlling in yeah, a lot yeah. of friendship in the same way that they can a relationship yeah. without yeah. even knowing it. Um, some people can be, have so many things go, not go their way that they turn into a bitter person. Yeah. And they might not be open. I mean, I think if somebody's open to changing, but if somebody has become very rigid and rock solid in who they are and demanding that all their friends accept that all the time, I think, no. What, yeah, no, no, what, the, sorry, the point I was going to make was that, so for example, if, you're, if you've had a friendship that's lasted many years and you know, you, you're absolutely committed to wanting to maintain that friendship, I, I, I think couples counselling for a friendship can work. In my instance, when I stopped drinking, so many friends, you discover what your friendships were about. The friendships were about drinking, they were about alcohol, they were about sort of things that just weren't good for you. There were actually sometimes friendships, in inverted commas, aren't friendships. They're about relationships that suit certain people because perhaps your life is in chaos or you're that friend that, yeah, toxic friendships, are RM's jams. Toxic yeah, they're friendships a real thing. really do exist. And so. Faith Goodman, friend for a, re for a good season to walk away. or a reason. Oh, I like, <laughs> like that. that. Friends for a season or a reason, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, if the friendship is toxic or it's not, or it's necessary, yeah, absolutely. Jackie Villino, my lifetime friends are more than friends. Mm. Yeah, it's when friendship becomes like family. Doesn't it? Mm. That, that, that and then you, and and then you're numbered with it, yeah. whatever they're like. Yeah, 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 exactly, I mean, exactly. 
<clears throat> I mean, all the friends I have now are friends for life. I know that, but I think that's what happens as you move through your life and you get older. You do, you do naturally shed mm. friends. And where I've shed friends has often been much more to do with me than with them, actually. It's been the problems that I've had and the stuff that's been going on with me. And I've, I've spoken about this before. I'm very ashamed of the fact that I've ghosted people before and, and I hate the fact... Intent, that, but not intentionally. Well, no, but I hate the fact that people would ever think that it was right. their fault. Right. Oh, some, some people have been toxic and that's, that's yeah, yeah, fine. Yeah. But sometimes it's been where I've been at and I felt so um, insecure and so unable to be what I think people want that I've sort of retreated... Mm. In my head, I've retreated, I've isolated. Mm. But in their head, where they've come from, I've dumped them and I don't like them anymore because yeah. of something they've done. And, yeah. and, I, and I've lacked the bravery sometimes, to be honest with people. Pink Lady makes a good point. When your life changes, sometimes you outgrow the friendship. And I think something you have to watch out for in relationships is that your friendship circle doesn't diminish as a consequence of the relationship that you're in. Uh, it might be that actually you, you, you have outgrown some of your friends and your relationship is, is taking you in a different direction or what have you. But more often than not, you know, if your friendship circle starts to diminish or change, and it often happens, doesn't it? It often happens with boys. You hear, certainly teenage boys, they'll, they'll kind of, they'll remove, you know, the, the, you know, people will remove their sort of, reduce their social circle quite dramatically because all they want to focus on is a relationship. And then once that relationship yeah. founders, they look up and everyone's gone. Yeah. Everyone's yeah. gone, and it's We've it's always difficult. spoken to our girls about that. Yeah. When you have a boyfriend, you do not, do not ignore your girlfriends. Do yes. not, do not, do not. And a boyfriend that encourages you to do that is a problem. Yeah. He's yeah. actually a problem, because it might be, oh, no, I just want to be with you all the time, but... Yeah. No. Because yeah. when it all goes tits up, yeah. where are you going to go? <laughs> can I just say, Michelle, you're doing a sterling job in the background there. <laughs> it's fun, isn't it? Um... These stories, I, I had them in the title originally. I just, we've talked about it before, and I'm not saying this for any other reason other than violence in London is getting ridiculous. There oh, were three we different so stories sick. last night. Knife wielding gang Fear. attempts to steal watches from groups. So do not, I mean, I'm now, it's, it's at the point now where I would say don't wear watches in central London. Did you see the thing that Dina sent this morning? No. Sister. No. So it's like the oldest, oldest, like, watch. You know, there's, yeah. <clears throat> and it said, um, how now the new wealth status symbol. Yeah. And it was just like that one from the 70s that we yeah, were Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I, I thought mean, that was that's... about the energy crisis, though. No, no, it's about because... No. Look at it, it's, it's a gas meter. Oh, I thought it it's meant because you haven't digital... got a flash watch. No, it's a gas meter, like, oh. a, like a Fitbit. Counting, oh, counting oh, the units. See. Yeah, yeah, no, I've seen that you before sure? somewhere else. Yeah, I think if you have a look oh, at I it, yeah. mine's funnier. Oh, right. Yeah, no, it probably is. No, it's a knife wielding gang's attempt to steal... Someone else saw uh, balaclava people on Westminster Bridge uh, trying to steal stuff from um, young girls, trying to steal their phones. So it doesn't matter about where there's a police presence. On Westminster Bridge? On Westminster Bridge, where there's the most yeah, police yeah, yeah. in Westminster. Yeah, Kensington High Street, murder arrest after man shot dead in Kensington High Street. And boy 17 stabbed to death after machete brawl of 100 people in Tower Hamlet. 100 what? people. What? What? Reports of a disturbance it's, it's last night? at 12, uh, Saturday night into Sunday morning. Two teams found... A hundred people with yeah, machetes? In a well, not all of them, but machetes were involved, yeah. So, you know, it's full, fully recommended. If you're a tourist in London, if you're visiting London, I mean, lots of people in London are looking to escape London. Um, do not wear anything ostentatious. I've seen it many times on Oxford Street. Young, usually women, standing at bus stops on their headphones... And because they're on their headphones, they don't hear. And mopeds kind of, and cyclists come down and they yank them. I saw a girl screaming because they pulled the phones out of her, her headphones out of her ears. So and what I suppose, you know, in a sense, just be careful when you wander around London. There's little bits where you just feel, you can see people with their phone out, but it's just like, don't stand with your phone overhanging the curb, curb. into the road. I would say to the girls, yeah, only just, one headphone in. Yeah, one so headphone in at all times, yeah. all times. Oh, welcomes, we've got three welcomes. Ah, so, um, Welcome to the family guest area, first of all. Um, every Sunday we do either a live hour or a bit and a bit show, or we do a recorded show, and they're all up there for you over the last... How many episodes are they? God. 120. Episodes, 120 episodes. Yeah. If you go to the playlist Sunday show. Um, yeah, 
So welcome. And we and we do a live every week. They're going to be more straight after coffee morning or wine o'clock now. Yeah. We'll change that round. So welcome. Yay. So Alison Barber. Well, these are all welcomes. Oh, welcome. Alison Barber. Barber. Alison Barber. Welcome to the family guest area. Alison nice Barber. Sure. Alison Barber. Welcome to the family guest area. area. <clears throat> welcome, Alison Barber. Uh, Sophie R, you've been before, but you're back again. Sophie R, Sophie R, Sophie R. Sophie R, Sophie R, Sophie R. Welcome to the family guest area. You may have noticed there's a theme here. Once we once we hit upon a vague rhythm, we stick with it. Louise Jones. Do a completely different rhythm. Louise Jones is here. Louise Jones is here. Louise Jones is here. I hope Welcome she's to got two ears. <laughs> Guys, have a lovely, lovely day. Uh, the Weekly Rushes will be landing soon. There's lots of news from the Venice Film Festival, lots of drama around the Olivia Wilde story um, and Florence Pugh and all that kind of stuff. So, guys, have a lovely Monday.